Charlie, you're watching Artists and Dice, and it is time for this week's update. Um, what's new in the world of Artists and Dice? Well, we finally got a Pledge Manager fixed. Um, it is should be 100% complete, fully functional, and ready to rock. We are launching it about the same time this video goes live. So if you're watching this video, keep an eye on your inbox for your invite. Um, we're going to roll out roll it out to our Maybackers first, and then we will um, roll it out to the rest of you guys uh, shortly thereafter. If you were part of, if you were not part of the Kickstarter, and you were looking to get in on the Kickstarter, we are going to open up the Pledge Manager uh, for you guys to kind of tag on in the, I guess, the uh, back end of the Kickstarter. Uh, we'll, we will do that probably Friday this week. We're gonna do it for 24 hours. Uh, you guys can jump in on the Kickstarter, get all the Kickstarter cool prices and stuff like that. Uh, then, but it's gonna be just for 24 hours only. After that, you guys have to roll off the website. So, um, what else do we do this week? Um, finished up these. These are cool little tokens for a game called Eons. And I know a lot of our backers jump on the Eons project. So um, if you upgraded to the really cool wooden tokens, uh, there's four of them. I think I just dropped the fifth one. There you go. Um, we made these on the laser cutter this week. And I videoed it. So actually, I think we made these last week. But anyway, yeah, we videoed it. So uh, that's in this video. And you guys are wondering what these are. That's Bloodwood. That is Bodark. That's Lignum Vitae. This is American Holly. And this is Purple Heart. So that is the tokens you guys will get with your Eons games if you uh, added that on to your box. Alright, um, what else have we been doing? Um, we've been working on polishing up our metal dice. Okay. So this is uh, one of our early test prototype D20s. Uh, that matches out of aluminum. If you notice something, you guys that already have uh, polyhedral dice from us, um, they have we have really crisp edges if you have wooden dice. Uh, they look something kind of like this. Okay. So they have a really crisp edge. On our metal dice, they will not have that crisp of an edge. Uh, reason being, um, I happened to step on one of these dudes and poke a hole in the bottom of my foot. Uh, so uh, I don't want my customer having that same problem. Uh, the edges are just way too sharp to do that on the metal. Um, so uh, we are working on ways to round these edges out. We don't want to go quite that rounded. We want to be somewhere in between how crisp that is and how round that is. So uh, we'll get that nailed down this week, uh, exactly how we're going to do that. So uh, what else we got? Uh, oh, awesome. Okay, so you guys that in the part of the Kickstarter that backed for the subscribe, this is your nifty, awesome subscribe box. Uh, this is the commemorative first subscribe run uh, coolness, and there's some really awesome things on the inside of the lid, which you're not going to see until you get to open it, uh, but that's what the outside of the box looks like. And it's out of Lignum Vitae, and the woods we used for our first dice are Catalosh and Satine. So you got the green for the Kickstarter, and then the uh, K and S. So, yeah. Um, that was cool. Uh, those are all done. And they are ready to ship. So as soon as you fill out your surveys, or your pledge manager, ma manager and survey thing that we're sending out starting Monday, uh, these will ship. Um, for the rest of you guys that are waiting on shipments, we have one last piece of equipment we're waiting on. And that is our CNC router. It is still not here. Uh, I was originally under the impression it was supposed to ship within four weeks after I ordered it. Um, we're closing in on nine weeks. Um, I was told, I guess it was last week, week before last, that it was shipping out last week. Um, I was unable to get a hold of the company, or the, the lady at the company that handles their tracking of orders and things like that. Um, she was out for, I think, like hospital with her mother or surgery or something, so she should be back in like Monday, and hopefully I'll be able to get a hold of her then and figure out exactly where we are with our router. Um, as soon as it gets here, we will make, make our fixtures and jigs and stuff to make our boxes, and we'll start cracking our boxes and getting dice shipped. Uh, so because um, I really need to get dice out of here. I have thousands of dice around my house. Um, there, I don't have a single flat surface in my house that is not covered with dice at this point in time. So they need to go. I'm running out of places to put them. Um, we've also got some other cool stuff in the video. I'm trying to think what else we got. Uh, oh, coleslaw came in. So uh, if you don't know what a coleslaw is, you will want to check it out. Coleslaws are really, really cool. Uh, we've also got a video of me um, costing myself a ton of money. Let's see, what do I do with that? There is maybe. Ah, here we go. So, this is a one inch 
cobalt drill bit. Uh, this is not cheap. They run like seventy five dollars. Uh, I was trying to bore out our fourth axis, uh, our metal machines, to run a through hole because we don't use a paper inside it. Uh, and because either I don't know what I'm doing or my machine is not capable of it or a combination of the two, um, I went took a brand new drill bit which is supposed to have a nice clean edge like that. Nice sharp clean edge. Not only did I do that to it, I also managed to get it stuck in my fourth axis and do that. So, uh, the guys at KND Machining uh, here in, uh, actually in Rowlett, Texas, were kind enough to fix my screw up. Uh, they have our fourth axes and they are using their really awesome wire, or, uh, it's an EDM machine, uh, to uh, bore out the centers for us. Uh, and uh, they were nice enough to get this out for me. So they got it stuck in there. Um, but you guys can see a video of me doing that, and uh, that's some of the cool stuff. I don't remember off the top of my head, but I'm going to quit rambling and go at this video so you guys can see the, uh, the, the cool things from, that we did, like toys and tools and awesome stuff. I love my job. So uh, anyway, we'll see you guys next week. Uh, if you're a pledge manager, keep an eye on your, your email because you should be getting emails from us shortly. Oh, speaking of emails, one last thing. If you have emailed me and I have not gotten back to you, I apologize. My email minion is currently on hiatus. He is finishing up his doctoral degree. Uh, so as soon as he's done, he's going to come back. That's sometime in August uh, when he gets wrapped, when he will have that wrapped up. Um, but until then, it's just me answering emails. So I'm like, I think I, think I got it down to like 200. We were just 200 about emails behind yesterday. But we get like 50 to 100-ish emails a day. Uh, so I am already falling behind again. Uh, I'm trying to do it as best I can. If I haven't got back to you, I'm not ignoring you. I just haven't got to your email yet. Um, so, yeah, if you guys are wondering where your orders and stuff are, I, I will respond to you. Just have some patience. We'll get, we'll get, we'll get, we will get in touch with you. So, anyway, um, on to the cool stuff, and I'm going to quit rambling. This is a what's called a modular cooling plate because this actually expands the usable surface of the mill by like 50%. It's huge. It also weighs a metric ton. Well, we got two of these. We got one for the big machine and one for the little machine. And we've got um, indexing fixtures for our rotary axes and all our other fixtures. So now Jamie's going to get to put this in that machine. This thing weighs like 100 pounds. At least. I hit it in there to see it.
So what you guys just saw there is our um, awesome CNC machine. We are doing a one-off operation that is letting us lower that tab on our fourth axis to get clearance for our ATC to have longer tools. Um, and it's my first time milling an expensive part because that ATC is like two or three grand. And so we're taking it really slow so I don't screw anything up. And we just finished the first pass. So we're going to re-zero it, drop it down, and then uh, do our next pass until we get it to the height that we want it. So, yeah. All right, so you're probably wondering why I am jacking up a perfectly good, you know, multi-thousand dollar fourth axis on our CNC machines. Well, like a lot of tools, you have to customize them to what you are doing. Um, we want to use an eight in, eight in, the 8-inch rotary uh, tables. Well, the problem is they don't fit really well underneath the ATCs, especially on our small machine. Uh, it doesn't fit at all. So that's why we chop these lips off right here. Now what I'm fixing to do is open up the center hole to a little bit over one inch. So right now it's about this big at one end. Um, that means that our uh, one inch bar stop won't slide all the way through. So we have to cut little chunks to the machine. I don't want to do that. I want to be able to use long pieces of bar stop. So, and then just kind of pass it through the chuck. So that means we're going to take this apart and machine the center board right through the middle of this hole with the bar stock rests down to one inch, or actually out to one inch. It's an operation I've never done because I'm not a CNC machinist, so um, here's hoping I don't screw up a couple thousand dollar multi axis or fourth axis. Alright, so now that we've got our part clamped up, our fourth axis already already to a bore. We have to figure out where to put the hole. Well, that's where this little tool comes in. This is a Tormox awesome little uh, touch probe. Uh, it's got a ruby right there on the end of it uh, that is lab grown to be exactly three millimeters in diameter. So uh, it's not cheap. But what it does, and then be able to calculate the distance to the center, and set that as a zero point. And that, that way when we bore our hole, with our boring bar, it'll be dead center on axis with the uh, rest of the fourth axis. That would be center. So now we get to uh, bore a hole. 